Mm -hmm. Blank sheet of paper, the artist's oh. biggest fear. So, okay. Grace and Perry says that great thing is like ideas are like little creatures that come out of the bush. Um, you have to be friendly to them. You know, the, the first something like that. I'm gonna get it wrong, but they're like little, they're, they're, like, they're, they're like little. No, I haven't, I haven't mentioned this in the piece. It's actually a little. Ideas are like little creatures that come out of the bush, come out of the undergrowth to you. And you have to be friendly to them if you want to go meet the big ideas. Like, yeah. Because they'll take you to the yeah. really. Yeah. Who? Just, just a question. Who? Who am I afraid of not being accepted by? Nice, nice, nice. I like, I like, I like. Um, I've been, I've been, I've, I've noticed like from day one that I've got an obsession with grids, right? which makes sense because I do I like to do line drawings and I'm into my geometry and things like that. And a lot of a lot of my work in the first and second year it was about like collecting it often involved going out into the street with people and photographing and collecting evidence and then I'd display them in shows we had at school in a grid form basically. So I was thinking to myself all this time, I'm obsessed with grids, you know, grids and I think Maybe I am interested in systematizing the art process. You know, almost I don't want to say mass production because that just has, that's just such a loaded concept. But that that type of mass producing of artworks, not mass, but hmm. multiple multiples of things that are all slightly different, so they're all unique yet they're part of a of a group or an, a set of, like an edition of prints or something. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful place to work. Never try to create and analyse at the same time because they're different processes. And I, I really agree with that. I feel that. Okay. But you can, in, in the sense that you literally can't do the two processes at the same time. I'm not saying you can't spend half an hour being, cre being creative and then the next half an hour being analytical and then switch back to being creative. You can do that, of course. Maybe that, maybe that process of like switching between the two things is happening in our brains constantly, all the time. You know, I'm creating for 10 seconds, I'm analysing for one minute. I'm creating for three seconds and I'm analysing. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Something like, 
And yet I still consider that I'm quite brave and I'll do things that I don't think I can do. And yet there's still all this fear. That you've got. Yeah. Well, this is it. Like, um, there's, a, there's a great line in a book that really helped me. This book really changed my life. It's called Feel the Fear and Do It. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know it? Yeah. Susan right Jeffers. Yeah. This book really, really was a big part. It's a big thing for me a couple of years ago. Just, 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 just as I was moving to London, or just as I'd moved to London or something, it fucking helped me loads. And one of the things she says in the book is that the people that we see as successful and happy in our lives around us, they're scared as well. They're just as scared as we are about things. The, the difference is that they're doing, they're doing, they're living their life in spite of it. They're doing the things in spite of the fear. They're not, right. they're not allowing their fear to hold them back. They're still scared, but they're doing it. That was a massive, mm. that was a big realisation for me, I was like, what you know? But you don't really believe that sometimes, do you? No, no. I, I, I try, I, I think I do, yeah. Like, okay. the person, you know, like, it, it's got to be true. Onto fabric, that like directly onto fabric. Can you get what's? Can you get like special pens that do that? Well, you could just get very fine pens because you're not going to ever wash. If they're not, if they're for artworks and not being washed, it wouldn't matter. You could just get fine drawing pens, or even ballpoint pens. Work on. That said. I'm just pissed off with everything. I'm pissed off with overthinking art, oh, with it being academic and intellectual, and I'm having to justify what I'm doing all the time. And it was making me, it was killing my creativity. I was in a creative block. So these are a kind of respite from that, from analysis, and from having to think. And she said, "Is that because is that because you think that's what artists should do?" And she, the way she said it was so like. She really enjoyed saying it because she knew it would get me, and it did. Do you know what I mean? And she was right, actually, I think, to some degree. I was doing drawings because I did think, well, this is what artists are supposed to be doing. Yeah. Definitely afraid of my mum being in poverty. I'm definitely afraid of not being accepted by myself, Alex Shady, Goldsmiths, Mujib, and those two girls that I fucking despise. Yes, you're on camera. Who am I? Or do we leave them? No, we don't have to leave them. I mean, I've got to be honest, they'd be probably be quite offended and hurt if they heard me say that. Okay. I've exaggerated it a bit. They're actually they're actually Harmless, nice they can't people. be totally like that. Can I get onto your? No, list. They're, they're they're harmless. They're nice people. You know, I ain't got anything against them. Actually, the truth is, but they both, in their own way, have made me feel small for, for choosing the life I chose in different ways at different times. They both 
either laughed at the decisions I've made or told me that I'm, you know, they just kind of, you know, when someone's like, um, when when some when, when people just make you feel small for for the, for the person you are, and you're like, fuck you. you know? mm -hmm. My mom calls it clipping your wings. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're wing clippers. Well, they're, wing, they're wing clipping type people. Well, that's just the power and and and, big that's time. Like, and, that. um, and because they're both girls, and because one of them I had a little relationship with, just wasn't anything that serious, but it was a few months and we got quite close, but then it ended. And they're very close friends, and they're the same age as me, and they're both quite assertive, powerful women. One of them is a clinical psychologist; the other owns her own restaurant business. And so they're quite—they're not—they're quite outspoken. Right. So for them, to, they're, they're people that challenged me. I guess I guess I should be. I guess I should be grateful for the impact they had in my family. Because they, they really, they, they made me feel small and made me feel like what I was doing was stupid, which I hate them for. But at the same time, uh, yeah, they made me who I am. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Sounds so cheesy. So I thought about like, yeah, just mixing it up a bit, and that'll make all the yeah, difference. Yeah, I agree with you. I just think it's that one though. It's very faint, isn't it? It's a bit too faint, isn't it? Oh, shit. I can't remember how we got onto this conversation, but we were basically talking about how important I was to her for some reason. I don't know what we were talking about, but it was in a context. And, uh, but she said, she said, yeah, yes, love you. She, she calls me love all the time. She said, yes, love, you're, you're, uh, you're one of the most, you're one of my, my life's biggest blessings. And that's what she said to them. And I, I remember thinking at the time, one of? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's never enough, is it? No, but I thought one of, like, aren't I the one? And, and that was when I was 15, and, and that's, that was the moment where you realise that your parents are just people as well with their own shit going on. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Could I be described as someone who is designing his trajectory? <clears throat> through an art context. Uh, don't really know where to begin, but we talked about um, one of the key things that keeps coming through is judgment, right? The judgment of others or the other, and whether or not there is actually whether or not that is actually a real person or group of people judging us, or if it's just in our head. Yeah. That's certainly how I feel a lot of the time. Carrying people around with us in our head. That's it. It feels like we are carrying people around with us. In <clears throat> maybe I should just speak for myself because I'm, I'm. This is this is. Um, I can only speak for myself, but I, I feel like I'm carrying the judgments of, pe of other people that uh, the the identity of who I don't even know but <clears throat> um, the art school thing is a perfect example of that 
I'm going on to do an MA and so I'm it sometimes can feel like I'm everything I'm doing is t trying to impress other people or trying to measure myself against someone else's standards do you know what I mean which can be a problem I'm ashamed of myself as an artist when I reveal that part of the reason I'm doing this is to earn a living. Right. I'm ashamed, there's a shame that I feel like I don't want to admit that to people because they're going to be like, you know, oh, it's so unsophisticated. Oh, you just don't get art, you know, art should be just for art's sake or whatever. I, I get it, I get that, I do. Because I, I spend a lot of my time making art for art's sake. So it's like a religion to me. It's the closest thing that I've got to religion. I'm not, I've always thought of art as a religion. Mm -hmm. I'm not religious at all. I don't, I'm agnostic, but art is a religion to me, for lack of a better word. Art oh, is a religion. You know, I stayed with my mum recently at Christmas. Um, there was a couple of occasions where we were bickering about something and, and I felt like I wanted her to take more interest in the particular thing I was making or doing and she, she didn't and in that moment I felt really let down by her and I thought why doesn't she take more interest in what I'm doing though? But I thought about it afterwards and seen that it's that actually why should, why should I expect anyone take an interest in what I'm doing, you know what I mean? I want to be taken seriously. I want to do a drawing that will have someone in tears because they relate to it so much. See, I'm, yeah, that's, that's, I've, I've never felt the urge to move anybody in that way with a painting, like what you just said, I've never felt like that before. Maybe well, I will. it's a selfish act in a way because I want to move someone yeah. to make me feel less alone in the world as well. That's what it's to do with. I don't cry at other people's paintings unless they're really bad. I've never. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I do cry at bits of music and I want my work to be the equivalent of listening to... I have to be very careful. David Bowie. Yeah, David Bowie. Manic Street Preachers. Yeah. Well, I was going to say Kylie, but that'll have to be cut. Um, <laughs> it's definitely not going to I want to, yeah, I want to do the, yeah, just a piece, a Joni Mitchell song from the late 60s. Let's Google why artists don't function properly in society because I can't get lids off stuff. Once university is over, even when I've done my masters and that's finished, there will be no support structure. It's, it will be what I it will be what I make of it. But that's something. That's a fear. Um, that I can do something about it's like it doesn't feel like a really really scary fear because I can I know I can do something about that I can make my own structure I can apply to residences I can choose to go and spend time with other artists and, you know what I mean so I can that's something that do something about it, so I'm not too afraid of that. That it's is, really, it is something really I'm afraid of.
happened on the ship. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh beautiful. I was always told that I start way more than I finish. I'm like, when I, when I, growing up, the first 20 years of my life, I was always the sort of person that would start a new thing and just change my mind and not finish it. Whether, whether or not that's a good thing, that's another conversation, but that's the sort of label I was given when I was a kid. Half a job Harrison is what my stepdad used to call them. <laughs> I can't believe I just remembered oh that. That came, that came out of nowhere, that. He, he, he never meant it I maliciously. Felt shame on that. He never meant it maliciously. It was always a joke, like, but just to illustrate the point. So for me, part of this responsibility is that what I, what I, that I have to myself to. I've made, I've made a decision in my life to be an artist, to go, and I've gone to art school to prove that to myself and to others. But the responsibility is partly to me <coughs> to not yeah, behave the way I have. Previously, which has always been to give up. So the, my responsibilities are. If you try and imagine that I'm, I really enjoy my art practice, and I'm not doing it to make money. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there is a little slice of me that is has an eye on that as well. I've got to always keep an eye on that for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, not, not just for me. I don't care about me. I can always I can survive on. I can be an electrician and easily survive for my mom. So there's a slice of my the, the sort of art pie for me, and quite a substantial slice of it is this preoccupation with so, somehow eventually earning a decent living with it. I don't know how I'm going to do that. There's, there's various ways you can do that. There's millions of different avenues to earn money through art, isn't there? Teaching, commissions, selling work. Um, you, I think it's not having all your eggs in one basket. I'm afraid of success. And then I made these. I want to be in love, but I'm afraid it won't solve all my problems. It's a bit presumptuous, isn't it? Very presumptuous. Mother and poverty. Women who don't wear makeup, oh, and that's not supposed to go there. Like, that just, I'm not trying to say that that's a mistake. <laughs> that's a I better, I better, mi I better mix this up a bit, otherwise people are going to start thinking that's a mistake. If your mum was in poverty, so that can go there. It's interesting how like things together start adding up to other things, isn't it? So I think there's something about I, I, I have a responsibility to myself to not give up. So this is our final, our final print, final print, emotional moment. <laughs> I 
one more. Final pull. Ta da! Ta da! Lift it up. Do it quick, so I think. Oh man, it's a beautiful thing. This is going to be. I say last week, you know, but this is this is probably <coughs> going to be one of the best years of my life. I think. Yeah. Mmm, sounds good. I'm pleased with that. That one was really good, man. It almost. It almost looks like, I don't know, it just looks so good, doesn't it? It looks like a Henry Mole. I was going to say it almost looks a bit Banksy-esque, like it's just been... Sp I know you don't like that, do you? But no, I'm alright. I don't mean it that it looks like street art, I mean it looks like a stencil or something that Banksy Yeah, doing. it does, it looks... I'm really pleased like with Like a that. stencil man. Both the Faye, that's cool. Who's Faye? Faye is a... Do you know when you're Faye, you're a bit... It's like a gay term, it's when a man's a bit like camp and a bit weak willed and Is it? a bit fey. Oh really? Yeah. It's spelled hard. F-E-Y. Like. Yeah, I don't like the word.